Good morning. It's Thursday, 10th of November, third of the way through November already. Hard to believe, isn't it? You guys are probably wondering, is he ever going to come back on? So I'll be on here today and then I won't be on here again until late next week. So, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> um, but we'll see if any, of, oh, there we go. We got a few lining out on here this morning. So some of you are checking your phone today, I guess. So but we have had a, a great week uh, with everybody that was here. Um, some of them are on their way to the airport right now. And uh, I didn't have to take them. So that's a win-win. So, but um, <clears throat> I know that Thane will be taking some of them to the airport tomorrow, and I think that's the last of our airport runs, uh, getting everybody out of here. So some of them, uh, are, most are leaving today. Just a couple are hanging around uh, till tomorrow, but it uh, has been a great time with these guys, and hope it's been a blessing to those of you who are able to come and uh, if you weren't able to come, and, and uh, you can go back on the archives and watch the live streams, and you are welcome to do so. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a great time. Great meals every night, and just a wonderful fellowship. Great preaching. Um, I, I don't think you'll find better preaching anywhere across the country. I really don't. And uh, just... Good, solid men, and, and love those guys, each one of them. So, but anyway, I thought I'd get on here today. I'm headed to Missouri tomorrow uh, to visit my dear family. <laughs> and uh, Tyler and I and Dustin and Brexton are, we are headed out there to uh, join in the fun uh, during the rifle season there in Missouri. So going to be gone a few days. Um, Coming back either Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe. So I probably won't be on here until next Thursday, so a week from today. So pray for us, pray for safety. I uh, get to visit with my mom and dad and brother for a while while we're there. And Bill and Babette are good friends and I uh, get to see them too. So it's kind of a family reunion also as we're uh, hunting. So it, it'll, be a, it'll be a good time. So... Just pray for that and pray for safety. Continue to pray for Carmelita Mayhew. Uh, I heard Carmelita fell yesterday. They had her in the hospital. Um, haven't heard yet what's going on, uh, how she's doing. I'll call Dave uh, today and find out what's going on uh, there with Carmelita. So not, not a good situation there. Um, James Garver, too, if you would, pray for James. He's been fighting that infection in his leg that he broke and would appreciate that uh, prayers, too. So Hannah McCracken is doing well, so praise the Lord. She's able to go home, and uh, all things are taken care of there, too. So we're, we are truly thankful for God's hand of protection on them. So <clears throat> I thought I'd get on here for just a little while and, and try to make sure and keep everybody talked off the, off the ledge after uh, the elections. And, uh, you know, here's here's the thing. We, we do our part, right? We, we pray for our country. We uh, walk in the Holy Spirit and by the power of the Holy Spirit. In doing so, we're, we're honest in our dealings. We're we're righteous in our behavior, and we uh, stand for what's right, <clears throat> and we vote, right? But we do our part, and then we leave it in God's hands, and we trust God to know what he's doing, right? Well, nothing has changed. He still knows what he's doing. And, and here's the thing, a couple of encouraging things I want you to think about. First of all, go look at the voting in, in our county, and our county was... Uh, well over 70, probably 75%, uh, very conservative in their voting. And so we, we still live in one of the greatest counties in, in the great state of Colorado. And uh, 
So we, uh, we're still a very conservative area here, and thank, I'm thankful for that. It's been a wonderful place to raise our children. It's a wonderful place to live, and love, I, I love the people here, and uh, love our communities, and, and uh, thankful for that. So, and you guys ought to be too. So, uh, and I'm not sure anybody on here is, has a bad mood about it, but I'm sure there probably will be some that watch, and, and so, First of all, just remember that we, we live in a very conservative county and we are grateful and thankful for that. And secondly, go look and see that the millions of, of people who voted conservatively. Now, I'm not saying that all of them are born again believers, but I am saying that we still have a, a great group and actually a majority a majority of people voted conservatively than than what didn't, and so the it, it uh, it's just the way it works out sometimes, right? So <clears throat> we need to don't lose don't lose sight of that. There are still a lot of of good, solid, uh, common sense thinking, moral people in this country, and. So be thankful for that. We we all ought to. And and uh, and and really in in all of this, uh, in all of the elections that's taken place, and all of the craziness that that has gone on, what has changed for us? I, I think about my neighbors on Samples Avenue right here, and I think of many of them that I believe, if you talk to them, do not have any kind of testimony of salvation. And so what does that mean? It means that I get out there and I tell people about Jesus. Jesus is the answer. And uh, and I don't want people to get upset with this, but I think it's a reality that we need to give thought to, that there have been far too many Christians who have made politics a god, and and thinking that that if if we just get our people in there and and that this country is going to to take a turn and and be so much better and the the government is never going to be what saves our country it's going to be god and it's going to be a widespread countrywide revival that god can bring to this country and and uh, bring us to our knees and bring us to humble worship of him and walking with him, then God may use this this government. But uh, I, and and I know that um, our government is one of the, the the three institutions that God has ordained. And right now our government is not God blessed. And we know that. We can see that. And so but it, it's not the government in itself that's going to save us. It's God that saves us. And so don't, don't, uh, don't put all of your fish in that one barrel and, and think that things are going to be okay. And so the government isn't what we worship. We worship God, and, and God's got that. And, and I do. I, I think that, that God is, is definitely showing us that there is no hope in the government. There is hope only in Christ and in following and walking with him. That's it. Let's trust him. Let's walk with him. We will continue to do our part. We will continue to be patriots. We'll continue to be good stewards of, of what we have. We're going to be honest, God-fearing people. That, um, But uh, our, our trust is in, in Christ and our trust is in what God will do. So Always, always, always remember that because, you know, sometimes I, I used to, boy, I mean, I, I would get really caught up in, in these elections and, and let it ruin my, ruin uh, several days afterwards, you know, to get my mind wrapped around things. And, and I'm just not going to do that anymore. I look we, right in the middle of the elections on Tuesday, we had a great preaching service Tuesday morning in the in the fellowship. Then we had great preaching Tuesday night. We had wonderful preaching last night. And it just reminds me of what truly is important in this life. And I, I'm sorry, but whatever the government rep represents these days has no bearing on me whatsoever. And so I'll pray for our government. I pray that God will... 
uh, bring it around to be a God-fearing government, um, but uh, it's God that I trust, and it's not any of these characters that we vote for. So uh, that's that's my thoughts on it. So now I, I do got to ask because I haven't checked. I should check this morning. What's the final vote on the mushrooms? Are are we going to be able to chew on psychedelic mushrooms legally now? Or uh, did it get voted down? I, I haven't heard. I, I, I mean, it just shows you the reasoning of our country and the reasoning of the leaders in our, in our state, of the wonderful uh, state of Colorado, thinking, so we can chew on mushrooms. Oh, right. <laughs> can you imagine that? <clears throat> Who would have ever thought that we would have a day when it was going to be legal? I mean, you know Willie Nelson's moving to Colorado. You know that's got to happen now. So, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, if, if that tells you don't trust the government, I don't know what else does. I mean, if they're going to say it and, and, and they're going to enforce this, you know, and, and so... How, how in the world, health-wise, can a psychedelic mushroom help anybody, you know? I mean, hey, you, I know you're dealing with a lot of anxiety, so here, why don't you chew on this mushroom so you can see pink elephants and spotted unicorns? So, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm getting into the scripture here for a few minutes and uh, probably get off here uh, uh, quickly. I still have company. One of them sitting in here on the uh, on the couch, probably just shaking his head, wondering what in the world is he talking about in there. So, uh, <laughs> Luke 24: Jesus has died, was buried. And now he rose again. Isn't that good? I, I mean, I love that the, the resurrection and the power of the resurrection, right? Luke 24, 16, and, and tells us that he's been walking with the, the, the uh, uh, men that were going to Emmaus, right? And, and uh, um, he's walked together with them. And, and then it says in verse 16, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. He said unto them, what manner of communication of these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass in these days? He said unto them, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, Mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. They still didn't understand here who Jesus was. He, he wasn't just a prophet. He's God himself, right? And now the chief priests or rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And then he goes, they go on telling the story. And, and uh, then he said unto them, O fool, slow of heart, uh, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And, you know, the thing that I get out of this is that, that Jesus is, is always with me. And, and, and since the resurrection and the promise of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> he has given us a promise that we will never be, be left alone. We, he will always be there with us. And so that's what I say. We, we, we let, that, we let the, the, the craziness of the world uh, affect us far more than we should because what changes with us? Our circumstances may change, okay? But that's fluid. They're, they're always going to be changing. And even our friends sometimes uh, uh, pass away or, or move on. And, and so our friends, you know, will, will change also. But I'm, I'm telling you that we let those things impact us too much because the one thing that never changes is the promise that God has given us that he is always with us through whatever. Whatever comes, he's there. He's walking with us. He, he's, he's present with us. And, and boy, we ought to just be so thankful for 
for who he is and, and uh, what he does for us and, and the promises that he gives us and, and, and stay fixed on him. And I read in Psalm 108, verse one, oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. And he goes on in verse five, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens in thy glory above all the earth. And then what does he say at the very end? Uh, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. Ooh, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. Look, the, even if we would have voted every, every conservative that, that ran for office, you, you just, human nature is human nature. How many of those that ran on a conservative platform are truly conservative? How many of those, when, when they get voted in and they, and they come and they feel the political pressures of the day and, and all of the special interest groups throwing all of the gifts at them and, and, all, and, and gifts are bribes, okay, and throwing all of those at them, how many of them turn from their conservative ways and do not do what they say? It is vain, do you hear that? For vain is the help of man. Do not, do not rely on the government for your help. The government isn't your big daddy. I mean, he's not the one that's going to, thinking that our government's so lost in the idea of, of money is everything, you know, all the money. Did, we probably then passed the $100 million tax increase to, to feed the world in Colorado, all of the all the free meals to all the little kiddos at school now so everybody can go and nobody is ashamed man i'm going to i'm going to go to school tomorrow if that passes i'm going to start going to lunch and tell everybody i identify as a 7 year old girl and i want my lunch take that <laughs> Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through, through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. All right? So hang in there, you know? I know we got to put up with Polis for another four years. I mean, that, that, that just can pretty much depress everybody thinking we got to put up with that jack wagon for another four years, you know? But hey, it doesn't change anything. It, it does not change anything for us. Nothing in the orders that God has given us as believers has changed, okay? It might get a little more challenged and it may be challenging along the way, but it doesn't matter. That God has us it, it, at this time to show our character, show our faith, show our faithfulness to, to just walk and, and be what God wants us to be. And, and let's not go like the way of, way of the other countries that, and I know our country's headed that way, but let's stop it. You know, let's walk in the way that, that we ought to walk. I, I was reading in, uh, uh, Ezekiel and, and, uh, chapter 22, and I, I want to end with this, okay? Some, some crazy things here, but in uh, Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-three, 23, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, say unto her, thou art the land that is not cleansed nor rained upon in the day of indignation. And, and so we're, we're going to see a description of Israel, but we're also going to see a description of our country, right? There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. So first thing, here are the priests that have become corrupt. Today, the pastors are in so many of these churches are so corrupt. You know, the Presbyterian Church just can't get enough of the immorality and pushing and pressuring and, and making their public decrees of supporting all of the alphabet soup uh, that's out there and, and allowing them to stand in the pulpit proudly in their immorality. You know, we have we have some jack wagon in Georgia that that 
is running against Herschel Walker, who claims himself to be a minister. He, he is a minister. He is a servant, but he's not a servant of God. He's a servant of the devil. And, and you see that, and we see that how in the world have, <clears throat> have those kinds of characters, how in the world has a Joel Osteen uh, uh, been able to come into such popularity in this country that that we consider or call ourselves to be a Christian nation, you know, and, and, and her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things, that they have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. I mean, we have, we have preachers today and, and we have a song service today that sounds like it's straight out of the concert of an ACDC highway to hell tour. You know, and, and we wonder why in the world are, are all of these uh, people getting voted in that are getting voted in? Because the churches are dead as Ichabod. Come on, guys, we need to do better. And, and her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood, to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies among them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. Sounds like the government to me. Oppressing those who are good, overtaxing those that can't afford to live today and, and, and uh, have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Are we not doing that, allowing all these illegals to come in for one reason, to get them to vote so they stay in power, so they have the money that they just cannot live without? I mean, you know what these nuts are going to do? They're going to break the country and nobody's going to have any money. And in a, in a few days here, what I'll do is I'll share, a, uh, I'll share with you guys on social media, uh, I'll share you uh, uh, a, uh, a recipe for how to cook squirrels because everybody's going to be eating whatever they can find and you might as well eat it and, and make it taste good if you're going to have to eat squirrels in this uh, uh, inflation and depression that's coming. I mean, we're, we're way past recession now. We're headed for depression. So, but then he goes on. So we see all this hopelessness, right? <laughs> and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me and for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. You, you know why? Let's make sure that if God looks down on our country and he says, you know, I see a wicked, evil country here, but I, I'm seeking for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. Well, that's us. Let's stand. That's, that's why it's called the stand conference. I mean, let's stand. Let's stand for God. Let, let's stand for right. Let's stand for um, uh, biblical authority in our lives. Let's stand for Jesus being the savior of the world. Let's stand against a, an evil reprobate government that's out there and stand for what's right and, and stand and do what's right and honorable. And so we see that, you, you know, the thing is, is you stand. He goes on, therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. You know what? The, the judgment will come, but those who are God's people will be safe. Whether it's safe in this life or whether our lives are taken, what are they doing? You, you, you want to uh, uh, threaten me with heaven? <laughs> it's okay. It really is okay, you know? I, yeah, it's sad to see the, the immorality banging their drums and parading their, their immoral behavior right down the middle of the street. And most of them, as they're parading down the street, most people will just go back in their homes and, 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 and ignore them or accept them for what they're doing. But there's gonna be some that's gonna stand out in their yard and give them a track and tell them that, your lifestyle is wicked and it doesn't bring you happiness, but I got the answer. Jesus is the answer. And he can deliver you from this and, and give you a joy that you have never had before 
and, and he can give you a forgiveness that you have sought for and, and you are seeking all of this attention and you'll have someone who watches you every day, who knows you so well that he can count the very hairs on your head and he'll always be there for you. So let's just stand and let's be what we need to be. So hang in there, walk away from the cliff, turn around go the other direction. We got work to do. God bless you guys and Lord willing, I'll see you next week.